Okay, okay. Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. I hope you have, you're having a very good day. Um, today, we're going to continue our lessons about new products. I hope that you can uh, write to the chat. If you're here now, please, please send um, your I'm here present so we can consider that as um, your presence here in class. Okay. Um, let me do a little recap about what we've been doing last class. We talked about developing and managing products. Um, we started to identify what new products were, new products, um, new products benefits in the first place. Uh, they sustain growth, they increase the revenues and profit, and they replace obsolete items. We discussed about obsolete the day before that. Um, some innovative firms. Um, we, we saw that there were many businesses that were very innovative and um, they all share these characteristics that they innovate their products or their services, their business models. They innovate the customer experience that we have with them and they innovate in their processes. Some major categories of new products that we have um, are new to the world products that open a totally new market. We have new product lines, you know what lines are. Addition to existing product lines, the items that are additioned to those lines already established. Um, we have improvements or revisions of existing products. I saw your, your homeworks, the pictures that you uploaded, if you did upload them. Um, I saw that many of you responded to this point number four, improvement or revision of existing products. The products that we usually have in our homes um, sort of usually to respond um, to that category. Um, number five, the reposition products, products that have been perceived by consumers with a sort of language, with a specific image, and now they try to change it. They conserve the same product, but they try to change the image that we perceive from them. And the last category, category number six, is the, the, um, the low price products, okay? Very, very important, we identify these six, these six categories. Um, and oh, let me see one little thing. Good, so I can see the chat in a more tidy, tidy way. I think I need another screen here to manage all the, the buttons I have to consider for these translations. Um, good. If there are people that join to our class from now on, please remember to say, I'm here, I'm present, hello, 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 so I can know that you're there. And remember that I can do, uh, I, I can ask any question to someone in the list and I expect you to answer on time. Okay, um, the new products exercise, we saw there uh, that you had to upload the picture. I responded to many of the tasks. I'm continuing the, the checking of these lessons. And it's very important. I saw a couple of people that responded to this particular exercise by adding the very same product that I showed in class. How is that? How is that possible? Um, it's very important that you do the analysis. It's very, like, it's easy to copy from what the teacher just said, but I want you to do it on your own and add a product of your choice that you saw that are new and you find at home. Um, remember, you can see them maybe in the kitchen or in the bathroom, but you have to do it on your own. So you can choose any of the three that I showed. I showed you um, the skip one. I showed you the Sucaritas Kellogg's. And I also showed you the Nova, what was it? One of the paper towels from for the kitchen. Okay. You see any other product that you can find in your home. Um, if you want to, if one of the people who are listening to this class and want to say, sorry, teacher, it was me, you can tell your classmates if you did send a picture 
of one of the products that I already said, um, showed you in class. Okay. Um, so then, like this example, okay. Then we saw why some products succeed and others fail. Remember, um, you had the the lesson that you had to answer the questions and answers. These four questions and answers. Um, reasons for failure of new product introduction. Number one, products may fail for any reason. Um, can I have someone? Amani and Orne. Uh, Amani and Orne. I want you to tell me a, a reason for failure and a reason for success. Questions one and four. You tell me a couple of reasons, please. Um, okay, Hero. It says, when a product says new, which type of category is it? Well, that's what I want you to, to check. I mean, you see the categories that are explained in the lesson. You have the lesson there in the Teams app. Um, you can find it when you go to Equipos, Marketing, Archivos. And um, you have all the list, the six categories, well explained, long explained. Um, so you try to see, hmm, this is, and usually it gives a hint. Um, just like we saw, let me show you here, okay. Um, this was an improvement or revision, the Sucaritas one, because it says, uh, Nueva Bolsa Resellable, okay. In that case, that characteristic tells you that it belongs to that, to that category and not to others. Okay, uh, the two girls are ready. Can you tell me your opinion? And I want Magda and Pepo. Um, Magda, if you can tell one of the one of the types of failure and Pepo, you tell the other one. Which one are they? Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. We have Orne there. Um, so one common reason could be that they don't offer any benefit compared to existing products, okay? If I have a product, what could it be? Like, there are many, this is like one of the major types of failure. There are times when we have a product, if, for example, if we're gonna sell, if we're gonna sell water, okay? Water can be uh, a good that we all buy. We buy bottles of water, maybe little, maybe big. But if we don't see that this type of water doesn't offer any benefit compared to others, then we wouldn't buy it. Usually we are attached to a brand. Maybe we like uh, Seltz, right? Seltz water or Awabes. I don't know which water you prefer. You just uh, tell me there. Um, but there are waters, there are even waters that we buy because we feel that they offer us a benefit that no other water does. Um, can you tell me an example of a water that you prefer because of X, Y, or Z benefit? You tell me there. Uh, we have then a money. A common reason can be if the price of the product is too high. Very good. If the product price if the product price yeah. if, if the product price is too high or if it's too low, then our company can fail to achieve the sales, right? Um, if we have a poor promotion, the product can fail. If we don't communicate well, we, if we have a poor distribution, then we can fail. Um, let me tell you a little story. Um, <laughs> I have you. Coca-Cola, the best water. Uh, I don't think so. That's not a water. But yeah, we can think of Seltz water, for example, the one that has 
no sodium, for example. There are people that literally buy that water because that is the water that they feel that will be beneficial for their health. Um, or the benefit I can have from the, I don't have it here, of a water that comes with this cup, okay? This could be a benefit of uh, a certain type of water. Um, there was a story, let me tell you super fast, uh, a story of my advertising teacher in university. He told us this story that I never forgot. Um, there was this brand, the, this brand of um, type of soap to wash clothes, right? So I don't know if you will remember this ad, but maybe you will, you were little. Um, so this type of soap was about to be sold. So this owner of the brand told my teacher, my advertising teacher, um, could you make a proposal for the advertising? Um, I would like you to be the one in charge of communicating about our new soap. So what is the difference with this soap? Well, this soap is now liquid. We always had the little dust in, in the shape of uh, powder, right? And from now on, we're selling it in, um, in bottles, okay? It, it was going to be a, a soap to sell, like a liquid soap. So this teacher of mine, he took the soap as like a sample that this sir gave to him. He took it to his house, he gave it to his wife, and he said, like, I'm going to work on a brand. Of, we're going to see if we can do a good proposal. So my teacher, um, he used to do advertisings for TV, radios and stuff. And he said, okay, uh, the proposal is done. I'm going to show it to the owner of this brand. He took it to this guy. Uh, pretty interesting that he received him in his office. And as soon as my teacher started telling the ideas that he had for this new advertising for TV, the owner was like, uh, yeah, that could be it. But how much is that? How much is the cost for this advertising? Maybe he said, I don't know, 50, 60 million Guaranis to do that advertising. And the guy said, whoa, I think that's quite a lot. Maybe we can do, instead of doing the advertising in a house that you have to pay for the owners to use the house to shoot the, the video, then we could just do it here. And right at the same time where my teacher was proposing it in the office to this guy, um, he would pick up the phone and try to make the price of the advertising come lower. Um, it was crazy. He felt super bad. Like, imagine you are telling a proposal, trying to sell your big, huge idea. He had, like, uh, an influencer to the idea. Like, he said, someone's going to be in our ad and we're going to pay to them. And he was like, no, 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 don't worry. I have a friend who is also an influencer. Let me call him. And, you know, the owner of this brand, the Liquid Soap, um, he was, like, trying to uh, get a super cheap price for this idea that this teacher... Obviously, this, this guy didn't understand much about... Uh, the advertising world, the advertising industry, and the cost that it um, required and everything. So my, my teacher, he said, well, I went back home. I was like super sad about this. Um, I was super discouraged because, you know, I had to work all day, all night to get a good big idea for this uh, advertising um, of the liquid soap. So he returned to his home and he was talking to his wife and he was saying, ah, oh, it was super frustrating. What was it? She asked. Uh, it was super frustrating. That meeting with the guy of the liquid soap. Oh, that liquid soap is great, she said, right? And he was like, no, but you don't get it. Like, imagine I was in the office and the guy was like, you know, putting, like we say in Spanish, putting the stick to the wheel, right? El palo a la rueda, like, oh my goodness, no. And it was like the worst. And she was like, but it's the best soap. And then he was like going on and on and on and saying like, but you don't understand. This guy was like crazy. Mika, okay. Can you try to connect it to your, now I'm, now I'm uh, reading it. Try to connect it to your cell phone plan. Can you... 
Can you give it a try, maybe if your Wi-Fi isn't working? Um, and you can send it, Jero, you can send it to my email. And then we finish the last part of the story. So this guy was saying, oh, you don't, you don't know this, blah, blah, blah. And the lady on the other end was like, but it's super great. It's a great soap and it's a great soap and it's a great soap. And he was like, okay. So these are the four P's that I always discuss to you in marketing. Um, my teacher got to the conclusion that the P of promotion, do you remember the four P's? Can someone write what are the four P's that we said we're going to discuss in, in the first course? Please leave it in the chat. Um, so he was saying, we have the P of product. The product, this specific Yes, very good, very good. This specific product was super, super good. I, I said this. It was super, super good, sorry. The product was awesome. The lady was like telling him on and on and on. It's a very good product. It's a very good product. It's a very good, pro very good product. Um, the price of the product is super cheap. I mean, you can find it everywhere and you can find it in little despensas, little shops or in the supermarkets. Um, the other, the other P of place, you can definitely find it in anywhere, not only with a good price, but it can be found everywhere. Not like any other super exclusive product that you maybe ask for this and then you, no, you can find this here. You can, you can find it in other supermarkets. No, it was found everywhere. So my teacher was saying, we have the P of product, price place that is super good of course you can have a sort of not so good promotion but still sell your product and the product i'm talking about is um i don't know if you've heard the advertising of pacholi liquido do you remember um there was an advertising of a parrot uh it was done like in a super super crappy way um, and it was done in the factory of the guy. My teacher, of course, didn't finally get involved in the idea. Um, it was just all orchestrated by the owner of the business. And um, that's it. Yes, es paraguayo, the one of the pirates. It was like, it was super catchy, but you could see it. Maybe you can find it on YouTube. It was sort of lame too, right? Um, not up to the standards of good high quality promotion or information um, that you can do in advertising. So it was a pretty funny, interesting idea that sometimes we can, yes, have a bad promotion, but if we have the other piece um, considered into this, then that's just perfectly fine, okay? Uh, these are some reasons of failure, some reasons for success, but it's a mix of many, many things. That's why we call it the marketing mix, okay? Um, do you have the advertising? No, I don't have it with me, but I can find it and I can send you the link uh, while I upload this, this lesson. Um, so we saw this and what, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna learn about the diffusion of innovation. What is the diffusion of innovation? Um, I would like you to copy this right now in your notebooks um, and I will go explaining each. I'm not going to stop. I just want you to copy this first part perfectly correct and then in the future slides, I don't want you to copy it like fully copy it if you don't want to. I want you to note take. Okay. Have you ever taken notes in English? I'm sure you did. Um, but I want you to do it. It should be a, a super fast note taking. Of course, I should be able to read it and it should make sense to you. So your handwriting shouldn't be super bad so that you don't understand your handwriting. But um, please copy this and, and I will continue explaining each. So diffusion of innovation. Diffusion of innovation. A person who buys a new product never before tried a person who buys a new product never before tried may ultimately become an adopter 
may ultimately become an adopter. A person who buys a new product never before tried may ultimately become an adopter. Come. A consumer who was happy enough. A consumer who was happy enough with his or her trial experience a consumer who was happy enough with his or her trial experience with a product to use it again with a product to use it again We are all adopters, as you can see. There are many products that we are used to buying and we are used to using. Okay? If we are continuously buying something, um, then we are an adopter of that product or that brand. Okay? And uh, down there, an innovation is a product perceived as new by a potential adopter. An innovation is a product perceived as new by a potential adopter. If we say potential adopter, what is potential? What should potential mean? If you have it, if you think of something, you can definitely write it there. An innovation is a product perceived as new by a potential adopter. Um, an adopter is any of us. Who was it? Uh, Victoria Centurion. Um, an adopter is, could be any of us. Adopter is someone who finds a product, feels like it's a very good one, so continues to buy it and continues to use it again. We're all adopters. Um, sometimes there might be people that you see a new product. This has to do with new product, right? Um, if you find a smartwatch that you like, we can be all in the process, in the diffusion process to adopt a smartwatch. Who here in this class have a smartwatch? Can you say there? Mm -hmm. Who has a smartwatch? If we don't, I'm considered, I don't have a smartwatch yet. If I don't have a smartwatch right now, then I didn't adopt it yet. So I'm not an adopter yet. The people who have it, they are adopters. And as soon as we, and you will see that this is a process of the diffusion of innovation. So there will be a time where everyone has a smartwatch. That's what's gonna happen, okay? Um, I asked beforehand in the other lesson, what were the two types of failure? Um, there was a, I saw that you responded there. Very good, very good. Yeah, the absolute and relative failure. Um, so there are times where we can fail completely and lose money for the company. Or we can fail in just one new product introduction. Um, if I launched this, this is a lip balm. It's from Maybelline. New York. It's a brand that the girls know. And um, maybe they launch this as new someday. But if we fail to buy this, then they would have had a relative failure. If this, if the cost of producing this, earning money for this didn't happen, and they didn't even recover from the cost, and they lose money for the company, then that is absolute failure. So 
these two things, absolute and relative failure. Um, and in this situation, we have an uh, Algerian because uh, you're gonna speak English. I don't understand what you're saying, mister. Uh, and Mateo, very funny. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, do you have any questions until now? Yes, no, no one has, no one has a smartwatch in this class. I don't see anyone saying. I usually have people with smartwatches. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay, there we go. Perfect. Um, so let us go through this. I'm gonna show you. You had one. What happened, Alison? Would you have it again? Hmm. You lost it. Oh my goodness. Normal watches are better. I like watches. Period. If they are smart, then I'm sure I'm gonna like them more because they're smarter. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna show you a little video of a situation where Apple, remember we saw the, the short video last class where Apple was launching an iPhone? Imagine this happened, this video I'm gonna show you now, happened five years after that, or six years after that. Five, five no, more. It happened many years after that. Well, this was when the iPhone 5 was launched. Um, usually this same uh, experience happens every single time um, Apple and usually sometimes Samsung launch a new product. I want to show it to you. Let's go. Dankeschön, ich bin sehr happy. Danke. Imagine that that happens for the launching of a new product. Imagine if you're involved in the creation of this new product and people are killing themselves to be there for the launching of your product. That's crazy, right? Um, so we're going to see what happens after we launch a new product and um, the impact that it can have in people's lives. Um, in the... Do, 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 do. This is what usually happens. And I want you to copy again this uh, term that says diffusion. Diffusion is the process by which the adoption of an innovation spreads. Okay. 
Diffusion is the process by which the adoption of an innovation spreads. Oh yeah, Janne, totally. Corona didn't exist and people could still touch hands. That's sad, right? Totally true. Uh, it's crazy how we see now, at least when I see films or, or series, I'm like impacted by the fact that there are crowds of people. It, it sort of like twisted my mind a little bit. We were free and we didn't know it, right? Okay, so innovation is a process by which the adoption of an innovation spreads. And there are five categories of adopters. There are five categories of adopters. And I'm going to explain each. You will see that innovators are least, are super little, the ones in red. Then we have the orange one. After the orange, there is something there called the chasm, C-H-A-S-M. That is chasm. What is chasm? Do you know what it is? Chasm is um, the literal translation in Spanish would be abismo. Uh, abismo, okay? There is like a jump that you have to do from the early adopters to the early majority and we will see why we have the early majority usually we're all in there then we have the late majority and the laggards let's who let's see who is who okay um let's see number one we have the innovators the innovators are the first 2.5 percent of adopters they are almost obsessed with trying new ideas and new products. They have higher income and are more worldly, active outside their community. Okay. Um, usually we see that they might be introverts or something in, inside their community, but outside their community, they are more worldly and more active. They rely less on group norms and they are more self-confident. They are more likely to get their information from scientific sources and experts. Um, this means these are the people, the very first people to try the new products. Most of the people that you just saw in the line in Apple trying to find the new iPhone 5, they would be innovators. They kill themselves. I have an innovator friend here that usually is up like until 4 a.m. like crazy there. Uh, waiting for the website to sell the pre-orders of uh, Apple products. So he's like, ah, the page full. So he's like trying to get one of the first, the very, very first items from them. And he usually knows these, the innovators are the people that usually know the prototypes before it was launched already. Can you think of someone in the class? Do we have an innovator in some way that usually knows these facts about, uh, you know, the the influ the what was it yeah the guys that i showed you last class remember the two youtube channels that do unboxing um so these people would get their sources from these other guys or they would find from scientific sources what are the new product introductions um rafa in the cars industry good very good that's good so here we have innovators number two uh, the Oh, so this is a picture of the number one, okay, the innovators. Number two, the early adopters. The early adopters are the 13.5% of people to adopt. And this is very important that you understand. Um, when we launch a new product, and it happened to me when I was launching the apps that we did, and the, um, um, there was a, I don't know if I told you already, I was involved in the creation of a new product called Escuchap, Escuchap, like double P. Um, and I, I, we created that on year 2015 in a, in a government sort of like contest. And in that case, they would always try to tell us, you have to get the early adopters as soon as possible. Why? Because the early adopters have influence over the next early majority. Okay. Like I told you in the, in the image, if we see it here, you can see that the early adopters are just a little, a little tiny uh, piece of cake, if you would say, 
uh, but they influence the next ones. They influence the early majority. That's why they are very important. It's very important that these people try your new products. Um, and usually, as you see here in the description, you will find that early adopters, um, although they are not the very first, they do adopt early in the product life cycle. They rely much more on group norms and values, and they are more oriented to their local community. It's not like the innovators that they are looking outside, okay? Um, they are more likely to be opinion leaders because of their closer affiliation with groups. Usually opinion leaders, what are opinion leaders? People that lead in their opinion, right? Um, what is another name that you can find for, for opinion leaders? Could be influencers. Early adopters usually are influencers that can attract to the masses. Um, and early adopters are a new product's best friend. Okay? They're not the very first, they're the 13.5% after the innovators. And an example that we can find here in Paraguay, um, I found many pictures, you know, Achola Terza, um, and of the brand Huawei, Huawei chooses them to be their influencers, and many others that you can see there, Chiche Corte, who are there in this picture? Huawei tries to get these people to try out their new product, um, they have people that do videos, they have YouTube channel videos here in, in Paraguay, so um, they try to, to give them even as a present so they can adopt this new product and they can influence others to try, okay? Um, yes, he's an EXA student from here. He was 2014, I think, yeah. And... Um, Du, 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 du. I don't, I'm not sure if he was the president. I'm not sure. Or that was, now I'm confusing with the brother. They had, they looked alike. But you know, these are the early adopters. Um, early majority, the next 34% to adopt. These are the people that we are usually belonging to this category. They weigh the pros and cons before adopting a new product. So they say, hmm, this is why I'm going to buy it. Um, they are likely to collect more information and evaluate more brands than early adopters. They rely on the group for information, but are unlikely to be opinion leaders themselves. They're not opinions leaders, but they might be opinions leaders, friends and neighbors. And a dominant characteristic is their deliberateness. What is deliberateness? Is the way that we can choose whatever we want. I mean, um, if I'm going to buy something, it's because I'm free to choose what I want. That is deliberateness. The next category, and you interrupt me if, something, if something's not clear, okay? Um, the, less, the, le the next category is the late majority. Um, the late majority is the next 34% to adopt. So the first was innovators. Then we had early adopters, early majority, and late majority. The late majority adopt a new product because most of their friends have already adopted it already, okay? They also rely on group norms, yes, but their adoption flows from pressure to conform. Can you think of people that are usually like that? So usually they say, no, it's not like that. That's like, pff, it's useless. I don't think that's going to work, blah, blah, blah. And two or three months later, they're using that product. Okay, they, are adopt they adopted it because they go from pressure to conform. And uh, they adopt it because most of the friends are, have already had it. Um, third characteristic of late majority. Remember, you have to take notes of what I'm saying because you're going to use it later. Um, late majority. This group tends to be older and below average in income and education. This isn't a rule, okay? Remember that this is just some characteristics. Could be uh, true or not. But this group tends to be older and below average in income and education and depend on word of mouth 
communication. What we usually say in Spanish, el boca en boca, okay? Rather than the mass media. The others might be influenced by the mass media. Late majority, eh, not that much. And the last characteristic is that a dominant characteristic is the skepticism. What is skepticism? Skepticism is... Um, <laughs> Mateo, that's good. Tute, tute was it, right? Good. Um, skepticism, like, eh, I don't think so, you know? The skeptic people. Um, the ones that... How can I say this in Spanish? That you're not gonna... Like we say, um, no, no me vende gato por liebre. That's a phrase we use, right? Like, hmm, yeah, I don't think so. But then they finally adopt it. Okay, that's the next 34%. And completing the 100% of people, we have, last but not least, the laggards. Laggards are the 16% to adopt. Like innovators, they don't rely on group norms. They're not like socially influenced as, mu as much. Um, but it has to do because they are tied to tradition. They usually are super traditional and they, they are close to the idea of trying new products. Maybe some people come to your mind. Maybe one of you could be a laggard. Um, or we can think of usually our grandparents, you know, or your parents. How am I going to use social media? How am I going to try that cell phone? Oh, you guys are with your cell phones all the time. But as soon as they get it, they're the last ones to adopt the new products. But as soon as they do, they're like fans of them. Um, it says characteristic number two. The past heavily influences their decisions. Okay, the past, the, the past experience heavily influences their decisions. Number three, by the time these laggards adopt an innovation, it has probably become outmoded and been replaced by something else. Okay, it is out of fashion already. Um, there might be laggards, there might still be laggards here in our country um, that not just because of their, um, their purchase power capabilities, but because of their mindset that they would say, I don't want that type of cell phone. Okay? And they still have a Nokia or they're still using a sort of product that no one uses. Not just Nokia the brand, but you know, the old phones that are not smartphones. Um, so by the time they adopt an innovation, it has probably become outmoded and been replaced by something else. And the last thing is that they're suspicious of new products. They're like, hmm. And they are alienated from a rapidly advancing society. They don't want the world to move on, you know? Their dominant value is tradition, okay? These are all the characteristics that we can find in this beautiful world of innovation. Um, what I want you to do now is to go to the Teams app and open Tareas. I want you to find uh, the questionnaire and as soon as you find it, answer the questionnaire. You will have time right now to do it in class. Um, and respond to the questionnaire is just five questions about what we have just discussed and attach these draft notes that you took. Okay, take your time and I'm gonna leave this screen so that you can you can ask any questions. Really? What is the question? ¿Qué hay que hacer? I don't know what you're saying because you're asking in Spanish. If you would just type it in English and I will respond happily. It's a questionnaire. You can answer right from there. It's an online questionnaire with um, forms. What should we do? Oh, now I understand what you were saying. Um, 
You should go to the Teams app. Let me show it again here. You can go to the Teams app. Please visit the Teams app and one, complete the questionnaire about today's lesson. There's a questionnaire of five questions or six, was it? I think it was six questions about what we have done so far in today's lesson about the diffusion of innovation process. Answer those questions. It's a multiple choice select question. Um, and number two, attach these draft notes. So you, just like in the other classes, take a picture of your notebook and send it to me so I know what you've been doing. Can we do it in Word? You mean, you meant Word, Jane? No, you should do it in your marketing notebooks. If you don't have your marketing notebooks, then you're gonna have to start uh, creating a folder for marketing. Maybe you can share it with other classes too, but you should have a file for just uh, marketing lessons. Paula, are you okay with your Wi-Fi now? And Mika too. Mika, you had some issues. Are you listening? Could you do it with your cell phone's internet? Are you there? Okay, Jane, what don't you understand from the lesson? You don't understand you have to copy any question? No, no, no. You don't have to copy the question. You have to enter in Tareas in the Teams app. You will find that there is a questionnaire over there um, that you just have to answer one by one. As soon as you finish answering the questions, you will see that you will have my correction updated automatically. Good, happy you're there, Paula. Um, do you know what happened to Mika? Mika la bonet.
Vale Doma. Vale Doma Nisky, are you there? Can you tell me what, how's your family? I'm always remembering your your older brother, Mauri. Pepo, you switched your username. Good. Where are the six? Hello, tell me. What can I help you with? Oh, I don't know. You got to answer, and that will be automatically responded. Um, it will be blurry like last word, so I need my mom's phone and she's not here. Okay, Mateo, you just upload with that cell phone that you say it's going to be blurry. And then after that, you resend it to me with your mom's cell phone. But I want to have your response today for this work. Like now, you will have time until um, 2.30 p.m. Shouldn't be that blurry with your cell phone. I don't think it's because of the cell phone. Maybe it's the hand of the photographer. Oh, Paula. Did you give it a try with your mobile cell phone? Can you try with your cell? Maybe you can do it in the Teams app with your, with your cell phone. Or try to share. The, the best thing you can do is share your cell phone's internet to the, to the computer. Pepo, was there a reason why you couldn't send the picture? <laughs> what happened, Rafa? I see that. You did all wrong. Oh my goodness! Matute, is it? I'm trying to understand this. I'm trying to remember the, the nicknames you had. One out of six? That's a problem. Did you pay attention to what I was saying through the class? Mm. Let me send this to your email. Uh, I didn't leave the wave so you can upload the image. Let me just correct it and add.
Okay, good. Paula, why are you going to cry? Don't cry. Uh, okay, you got it. Very good, very good. I uploaded another link in the Tareas assignments um, in the same Teams app, so you can upload the picture of your notebooks. Teacher, why should I send the picture? Oh, that's what I just said. <laughs> Sorry, now I read it. Um, you can upload it there in the Teams app. Matute, I tried, that's what counts. Uh, I think you could do better, more than one out of six. Okay. Let me see. Magda, why would you say you're gonna die? And uh, write that in English. Um, you shouldn't die. It will appear eventually. I just uploaded it. Let me see if it appears to me. Yes. The two are there. Um, there's a diffusion of innovation, the one that you answered with the questions and answers. And then we have diffusion of innovation, the marketing notebook notes. There you can upload it. Excellent. I see that 18 people responded to the case. Um, can you tell me what happened to um, to Micaela Bonet? I see Mika said my Wi-Fi isn't working teacher for like a thousand times. I don't know if she came back again or if she's doing the, the work. Um, mm -hmm. Very good, Magda. Happy for you. Okay, so let's go through the, um, through the forms. Let's see the answers. The question number one said... Let me open it. Here it is. Okay, this group usually includes influencers. What was it? Number one? It was, just like I said, early adopters. Um, very good for the people that answered early adopters. Um, influencers only belong to the early adopters category. It couldn't be an influencer that was in the early majority or laggard, for example. Okay. Um, oh, we will see that, uh, Victoria. Why are they least influenced? They are not that much influenced by people. It's not like that they are not influenced because they see things, but from their outside community. Let me show you like it was in our presentation. Um, here, the innovators, uh, da -da -da -da, they rely less on group norms and are more self-confident. They're not that much uh, affected by people's opinions. Usually it has to do with their you know, their beliefs about this certain brand or certain product that they like. Okay, let's see the... Da, da, da. This group, number two, it said, the group weighs pros and cons of a product before adopting a product. Who weighs the pros and cons? B that we said that it was most of us, early majority, okay? Early majority weighs the pros and cons. Um, this group follows tendencies of influencers. Again, early majority, okay? Very good, very good, Vale. Perfect, Ma. Um, again, number two and number three, we had early majority. Then 
Uh, question number four said, this group are the last to adopt a new product and usually do it when the product has come out of fashion. You know this one, I'm sure. <laughs> Matute, this was one of the ones that you got right, right? <laughs> question number four, um, it was the laggards. Very good. And then um, question number five said, these two groups include people who aren't usually socially influenced. Okay? The people that are not usually socially influenced are innovators as much as laggards. The two, um, the two ends of our, like the beginning and the end of our diffusion process. And then, <laughs> and then question number six we have. This group obtains information about a new product from outside community and scientific sources. And I told you already before, these were the innovators. Um, I hope you liked today's lesson. I don't know if anyone has um, maybe a question you would like to clear, clear something before we leave. No? Is everything okay? Are you, are you okay at home? How are you feeling in this? Quarantine time. I think, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing that soon enough this quarantine will be lifted. I mean, we will go back to meet. But I don't, I'm not sure if school. I think that school will take a little bit longer. Longer than expected. Mm -hmm. Rafa, how can you be depressed? I don't think so. Are you? It happens to me. I'm a super, I, I'm an extremely super people person. Um, I like sharing time with people and hugging people. And you know, you, you have known me just a little bit, maybe just a month, but you know how I am with people. Like I like to relate to people and it has been a struggle for me too. You wanna go out, Magda? You can, I can take pictures. What? Ah, uh, Matute, I can take pictures. With your cell phone, you mean? Can you try to get someone else's phone to upload a picture? Um, then... Oh, you hate quarantine. Pepo, you have otitis. What happened? Were you in... Usually when I was little and I had otitis, I think it was when I went to the pool to a swimming pool and stuff. <laughs> um, but take care of that. You should uh, check it out. Uh, well, on my end, I'm having like ups and downs in this quarantine time. Um, I don't know if I told you, I think I told you that we have a business with my husband. We have a digital agency, a marketing agency. So it's been a real struggle uh, with all the workers that we have and uh, some clients that are leaving and some new clients that are appearing. You know, we sell the, we do web design and um, manage the social media of many brands in Paraguay and it was a huge hit in the last month because in one month we lost 10 clients and that was like super sad um, and because we have 14 workers and that's a great struggle of what we're gonna do if we're gonna have some people leave our, our business and uh, manage you know the home office we're trying to do like we're trying to encourage people uh, we're having meetings every single week. We try to do some exercise together and we um, have good team discussions online, but it's like you just say, it's not the same. Sometimes it hurts to be like this. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Okay, so I'm happy to share this time with you. I think we're gonna leave early today. We did a lot. Um, if you have any other questions regarding to today's work or if you want to clarify something, don't hesitate, just send me a, an email. I'm going to be avail available for you. Um, thank you very, very much for today. If you would like to give me, before we say goodbye, can you leave me a comment of something that you're leaving this class with? Some new concept or some new thing that you learned, that you grasped? You grasped? Um, in today's class just before we say goodbye and we're gonna leave five minutes earlier so we can have 
time to spread your lips. Yes, I'm gonna upload this lesson to the Teams app too. Um, I'm, I'll just upload it right now as soon as we finish the, the transmission. As always, the lesson will be uploaded if you go to Equipos, then Marketing, and in Marketing, find Archivos. Um, do you like this way that I'm sending you the files? I'm uploading all the videos so you can find it on YouTube if you missed any lesson. You can tell the classmates that are struggling with their internet today um if they if they want to check something out then they can do it there too uh-huh how the innovation spreads good the categories of ad adopters not adapters good uh innovators are the best i don't know if they're the best they're just they just like and can afford a new product uh, Good, uh, Rafa, that's a good observation. That was something that really caught my, my attention when I learned about the diffusion of innovation, um, that it's uh, how we perceive by. I mean, the innovation is something that is perceived by people. Something, and it happens in a normal conversation. I can say, oh, did you see the new super cool bottles? of water and you can say ah uh, that's super old did it happen to you that you're speaking to someone and you're like the last one to hear about something well that's why uh, because an innovation is perceived by people um, of course we launch new products new products we don't discuss them but innovation is like a perception of people um, okay Good, good, good. Okay, perfect. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I hope to see you soon. I hope you have a very, very good day um, and continue being home, being safe. Have a good time with your family. Um, take a little time to talk to your parents. I'm sure that just like I am, like super struggling with the business, I'm sure that your parents are, um, if they're working in any business, they might be having some thoughts and not feeling that happy. Sometimes we take things for granted. I just, rec I, I just recommend you um, to take your time, try to make a dialogue with your family members, maybe your older or little siblings and with your parents. I'm sure um, we, can, we can make the most of this time of quarantine, okay? Um, thank you, thank you for it. You should be a YouTuber, <laughs> we'll see that. Um, I hope you have a very, very good day and see you. Bye, 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 bye.